Hey team, today's video is going to be about exhaustion perks, what they do and when is the best time to use them in order to get the most value. Exhaustion perks are perks that grant you some sort of speed, immunity, or something else that is very strong. So strong, in fact, that they need to be put with a cooldown after use. Typically, the cooldown is 40 seconds at max perk level. But with another perk, Vigil, you can lower it an additional 25%. It's also worth noting that the 40 second cooldown does not go down while you are running, so keep that in mind if you want to recharge the perks very quickly. Currently our short list of exhaustion perks is Adrenaline, Balanced Landing, Dead Hard, Head On, Live, and Sprint Burst, so let's go over them. First we'll go over two perks very quickly that I almost don't consider to be exhaustion perks. They apply exhaustion but their activation is so unique that you could honestly use other exhaustion perks alongside them if you wanted to. These are Adrenaline and Head On. Adrenaline heals you a single health state when either the final generator finishes or the hatch gets closed. This means if you're on the ground, you get up. If you're mending, it removes the mend. If you're injured, you're not fully healed. In addition to this, it gives you a burst of speed for five whole seconds. This perk is extremely powerful. It can single-handedly turn the tides in a game. It procs even if you've used another exhaustion perk. It procs when you get unhooked, the last generator finishes when you're hooked. It's amazing. There's no time not to use this perk. My only caution is that since it grants exhaustion, you won't be able to use anything else when this perk procs, so be mindful of this. Head on. This perk activates when you go into a locker, wait for 3 seconds, then exit the locker at speed. If the killer is close enough, they get stunned for 3 seconds and you're free to run off. Why is this in this category? Because you will rarely, outside of either extreme practice or memeing, be able to use this to save your own life. Sometimes you can use this to great effect at places like jungle gyms or other odd tiles, but in a chase this perk is next to worthless. The best time to use this is in conjunction with teammates. You have your friend guide the killer into your head on path and then stun them, giving you both the ability to run free. Also, almost always run this alongside the perk quick and quiet. It allows you to hop into a locker very quickly with no sound notification. Trust me. And now for the more traditional exhaustion perks, balance landing, dead hard, live, and sprint burst. Balance landing. This perk used to be quite a bit better but it had to be toned down for balancing reasons. Right now, it reduces the stagger from falls by 75%, the grunt noises from falling by 100%, as well as granting a 150% speed buff for three seconds when used. The first two bonuses used to be granted while the perk was on cooldown, but not anymore. The way you use it is simply falling off a cliff or jumping out a window at height. That's it, it's pretty straightforward. The situations where this perk is useful are limited. Hills on maps like Macmillan or Wrecker's Yard turn into decent tiles instead of dead zones if you have this perk. Windows in buildings on maps like Lampkin Lane or Badham Preschool become very strong with this perk. But its problem isn't that it's not good, it's just that you have limited times when you can use it. This restriction is crippling to this perk. You only really want to use it when you don't want to have to think about where you, whether going up a hill is bad or not. Next up, Dead Hard. Considered the most powerful of the exhaustion perks. Dead Hard is a short dash that can only be activated when the survivor is injured. During this dash, you gain invulnerability frames and thus can dodge attack. You can activate this perk while running and pressing your action button. On PC, it's E. Its usage is Feast or Famine. If you use it wrong, it can seem very weak or even useless. However, if you use it correctly, you can extend chases for a very long time. If you dead hard in the middle of nowhere, dodging a hit or not, your perk is worthless. You might cause the killer to blush a bit and then proceed to murder you, but other than that, nothing. The best time to use dead hard is for distance. What this means is that if you're just a bit of distance short of a pallet or a window, you dead hoard in order to make it there. 
The very best survivors use this perk to stretch out long loops and squeeze the very most from every tile. Live. When you medium or fast fault a window while using this perk, you get the usual speed boost of 150% for three seconds. This is a very powerful chase breaking perk in that it can create tons of distance between you and the killer. Don't use it to run past the killer, hoping that they'll miss an attack due to your insane speed. This is pretty silly and grants you nothing other than possible style points. You'll die just as quickly as if you didn't have the perk. Instead, use it while the killer is pretty far away from you. Or if you happen to be at a weak tile like the LT walls, vault the window and take off in a different direction. If you break chase, go as far away as you can before the killer catches up and you need to look for a tile again. Sprint Burst. Very similarly to live, you simply get a 3 second burst of 150% speed. However, the difference is that with Sprint Burst, you press the run key to activate it. That's it. You just run and you get it. This typically causes people to walk everywhere they go, not wanting to use it in fear of wasting the thing. Eh, a legitimate concern, but maybe half the time unnecessary. If you're going to unhook somebody across the map, just run there. If you're heading away from an unhook and the killer is nowhere in sight, just run there. You aren't really losing anything. Some people wait for the very last second to activate their sprint burst while working on a generator. This is not strictly bad as you can dodge hits with it, but unless the gen is about to finish, it's much safer and harder to deal with as a killer with sprint bursts to just take off across the map. The only exception to this is in closed maps like maybe the game or Larry's where this killer can cut you off. Definitely use it to make distance. How you manage that is up to you. Some very, very good survivors quote unquote 99 their exhaustion cooldowns so that they can essentially activate the perk during a chase after a pallet or a successful vault or something like that. This is a very frustrating thing to deal with as a killer and should be a learned skill if you decide to use this perk. One last thing before we close out is a small list of exhaustion effects caused by killers. The perk Blood Echo from Oni causes all other injured survivors to be hemorrhaged and exhausted for 45 seconds after hooking a survivor with a cooldown of 60 seconds. This perk is nowhere near meta and won't be used on killers outside of Plague and possibly Legion. It's nothing to really worry about as it causes almost the same cooldown as a regular exhaustion timer. Just wait it out. You also have Mindbreaker, a Demogorgon perk. This causes a survivor to be exhausted for 3 seconds when they touch a generator with less than 50% repair progress. This perk is next to worthless for killers and actually sometimes helps survivors. It essentially gives sprint burst users a free 99 on their perk, which can waste even more of a killer's time than if they just used it instantly. Add-ons that you will see are Andres' Barris Toxin, her venomous concoction and clown's solvent jug. When either killer hits you with their projectile, you'll become exhausted for a certain amount of time. This timer doesn't typically matter since if you're in a chase, you probably won't be able to wait it out. So if you find your killer using such an add-on, be sure to use your perks very early to get good use out of them. Add-ons that you won't see as often are Demogorgon's lifeguard whistle and Pig's slow release toxin. Demo's add-on causes survivors who come in contact with his portal to be exhausted for 5 seconds after leaving. This is not very much and will work similarly to Mindbreaker. It gives Sprint Burst users a free 99 and other than that, not much else. Pig's add-on seems a bit strong, being that it causes exhaustion of the duration of the reverse bear trap. However, most people who get the trap try to remove it as quickly and as far away from the killer as possible. This means that likely you won't need your perk while the trap is on you. Be sure to keep track of the killer if you find they're using a perk or add-on that causes exhaustion. A constantly exhausted survivor means that they're essentially carrying a dead perk, and that's never good. Unless it's adrenaline. Adrenaline is always good. And that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it and got something from it. Share it with your friends, drop it a like, let me know what your favorite exhaustion perk is in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.